Hello, welcome to another edition of Steve Wyatt Fix It Guy. I'm Steve Yakshi, and this is my YouTube channel where you can learn to fix just about anything. In this edition, we're going to be working on an automatic garage door opener. It starts to open and then it stops. So we're going to find out why and then we're going to fix it. And if you find this video helpful, please hammer the like button and be sure to subscribe. And if you make a comment, I'll be sure to reply. So let's go do this. So what we're dealing with here is a LiftMaster Professional made by Chamberlain. And uh, if you look above, you can see uh, the belt, okay? And this is a rubber belt, not a metal one. Uh, they do come in both types. And what I can see looking at the belt, um, I can see that the teeth, the rubber teeth are missing on parts of the belt. I'll show you that here in a minute. So if you look here, you can see that uh, we're missing some rubber teeth um, exposing just the wires. And uh, so we're, we've got considerable damage to this. If you look over here on this side, you can see we're missing a whole bunch of teeth and only the wires exposed. So this is why the door is stopping because once the gear hits that, it's no longer going to pull the belt. So let me show you how to take that apart, put it back together, and fix it. One of the important things to find on this uh, garage door opener is the model number. And it's on one of these ends. This cover uh, for the lights, you, you simply press in here and then you can remove it. And then once you do that, you'll find a model number right over here. And that's important so that we can uh, go order the spare parts that we need. So using model number that we found, let's do a search for a replacement belt and see what we get. One thing to note is the height of your garage door. In our case, it's seven foot. Uh, it's fairly common. So let's see our results. So here's a couple of options. They're both for seven foot doors. They both have the same part number and they're both similarly priced. If you scroll down, you'll see our model number listed. So let's order one. One of the first things we want to do in order to replace this belt is to remove this cover. Underneath this cover is the drive gear, and we'll want to be able to uh, get the belt off the drive gear, so we have to remove this cover, and we do that by removing uh, these Phillips screws here, and then there's one down in here. So here we are at the other end of the belt, and you can see there is another gear here, but this is uh, not the drive gear, that's simply an idle gear. Uh, but you can see right here is where we have our connection. The belt is connected here. And what we need to do in order to take that off is first unlock it by pulling down on that. And then we're going to loosen this nut right here. Make note before we do that, though, about how much thread we're seeing here from when we put it back together. And also the parts. We have a spring. We also have a washer right here. Um, we want to remember the order of those things when we go to put it back together. So this nut is 7 16 so we're going to take a wrench and we're going to start to loosen this and you're going to need to hold the uh, belt because it'll twist while you're loosening this and just remember uh, tidy righty, loosey lefty. So here we go. All right, we've got it loose enough now where we can take it the rest of the way off with our fingers and uh, that way we can get <clears throat> the belt off. So there we go. Remember the order, this washer here, we don't want to lose that. So then what we need to do is uh, we need to turn this. So we'll, we'll push it a little bit to relieve the tension, turn it and lift it off. And now we're able to just get the entire belt off. One of the things you'll need to do when you buy a new belt is you'll have to take some hardware off the old belt to put on a new belt. As you can see here, our threaded rod and uh, we've got uh, the two sides. And on one side, you can see where we're able to take this clip off and uh, remove this from the belt. Easiest way to do that is we'll just take a pair of needle nose and we'll push it off. You can see it just popped off. Doesn't always do that, but and then we just take this, turn it over actually. There you go. So we've removed it and we can put it on to the new belt. You notice on the other side of the belt, we have the same thing, um, this, this clip right here, and we'll just use the same procedure to remove this and put it onto 
the new belt. So to put it on the new belt, we'll just reverse the process. Put that on there, and this here. Put this in to connect it to, and then we'll take our clip, and we'll push it on in place. And then we can just use our needle nose to get the final step. Push that in place. There is a little groove in this pin right here um, that this clip sits into, so make sure you hit that groove. So the first thing we're gonna do is connect this back right in there, okay? And then we're gonna make sure that we wrap this around our idle gear, but make sure it's tight, okay? Make sure it's tight here. And then we're gonna go over to the other side and connect it to the drive gear. So here's our drive gear and we're gonna take the belt and we're gonna make sure that it's not twisted and we're gonna get it around the drive gear, okay? And make sure that this is tight as well, as tight as you can get it. So we got it wrapped around the drive gear. Now let's go back over to the other side and let's finish connecting it. So now we're back down on this end and the first thing we'll do is put our threaded rod through the hole. And then we're gonna look down at our belt and make sure that it's not twisted. So it looks like we're okay. And then we'll put our parts back on in the same order. So. First of all, our washer. And then our spring. And then, of course, the nut. And I'm just going to tighten this by hand to start off with. So here we are. We've screwed it into the approximate amount of thread we saw before. And the reason we want to do that is we don't want to get it too tight and put a lot of stress on this belt. You can see we still have some slack, which is good. Also, look down, make sure that we haven't twisted the belt any, because as you, as you turn this nut, it's real easy for this thing to get twisted up, see? So make sure that it's not. Once you get it to where you want it to be, make sure it's not twisted in any way, and we should be ready to roll. So before we go putting the cover back over the drive gear, let's just see if it works. I'm gonna press the garage door opener. And look at that, it's opening and it's not stopping. All right, well, let's put the cover back on. As you can see, we got the drive gear cover back on, so we're finished with this job. Thank you for watching this video. Again, if you found it helpful, please hammer that like button. And if you thought I really nailed it, please subscribe. If you leave a comment, I'll be sure to reply. And that's it until the next edition of Steve Y the Fix-It Guy.